I'm David Griffin, it's the 16th of September 2018, I'm here at Derbyshire County Cricket Club and I'm talking to Steve Goldsmith. Steve, it's a pleasure to, uh, to have you on board for this yeah. heritage project. Um, you're probably most famous for something which we're going to discuss later, but of course that was for hitting the winning runs when Derbyshire won the uh, Sunday League in 1990. But if I could just take you back first of all to, to your earliest involvements in cricket, which presumably were down in, in Kent. Yeah, I was playing um, what, from about the age of eight. Um, I used to follow my father around. He used to play for Folkestone um, and was captain there. And we used to go to our games every Saturday and every Sunday, um, follow him around. And as a junior, just uh, be playing out in the on the outfields and uh, behind the tents at Folkestone during cricket week. I remember that well. Um, but that's how I sort of started. And I played my first proper game of cricket for the adults when I was eight years old. As a filling, I just happened to have my kit in the car, as ever. <laughs> Tends to be the, the way, doesn't it? Most people, that's their their first game was kind of a you'll do sort of thing yeah. as we needed. So, what, 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 did you have ambitions to, to play? Presumably, you wanted to play cricket. Were you Always. playing other sports as well? Um, yeah, I was playing um, a bit of hockey. I played a bit of football when I was younger, um, but hockey from about the age of fourteen. Um, and enjoyed that, but cricket was always the, the number one. And I was very fortunate that I went to a school, um, the old fashioned grammar schools, uh, where our teacher there, a guy called Bob Harriet, who played minor counties down, I think it was at Dorset or Devon, um, he was a, an absolute fanatic, but also a, um, a great coach. So he taught us the basics. Um, and we produced a number of players, including one, another one who came up here, Lindsay Wood. Mm. Uh, came up briefly up here. Uh, but unfortunately, his knee gave up on him for the football. But um, yeah, he taught him and a guy called Mark Dobson who went off to Glamorgan. So there were a few of us that went through the system, um, through the school, and he got us into county cricket. So presumably through schools you played representative school cricket, or was that the next kind of stage? Yeah, through the school cricket I was playing quite high up from a, a young age, um, and it was my coach at my club down in, in Kent that put me forward for under 11s, and I was, one, I was very fortunate in the sense that the last game that they put me into was an under 11 county game, and it got rained off, and uh, they didn't have any more, so they put me up for an under 12 game instead. And uh, from then on, I always played a year up. Right. Um, so it pushed me on that little bit quicker, and that got me eventually into sort of the Kent un second team, playing at sort of 15, 16 years old. Were there other players who went on to have county careers that were playing around that time in in schools cricket that you were involved in? Yeah, there were a number of us um, that went through, and Trevor Ward's probably the one that I came up with the most. Yeah. Um, the two of us sort of came through second team cricket together. Um, and eventually, obviously, went our separate ways from from Kent, um, but he'd had a he had a really good career, um, and Graham Cowdery as well was right. another one. So uh, we were all around the same sort of age group, um, coming through the ranks and playing club cricket together as well. So with the, presumably there was that mix of, of schools cricket and club cricket at the same time. Which club were you playing with at that time? Um, I was at St Lawrence and Harling Court, which is just on the outskirts of uh, Canterbury. Yeah. Um, so I was playing for them uh, in the first team um, and I think probably learnt more. We were playing league cricket, but uh, learnt more by playing the, the all-day friendlies right. um, on a Sunday. So we had uh, uh, all these guys that were teaching you how to play cricket in an all-day format from a very, very young age. Yeah. And was there an ambition within you to, to, to pursue a county career or was it just something that came along? You know, was it... I think I, it was never in my mind to do anything else. Right. Um, but I never really thought about it particularly either. You know, yeah. it just, it, the progression just happened. Um, and I had good coaches with people like Brian Luckhurst, Alan Elam, uh, John Shepherd. Um, so from the great Kent era, yeah. um, but also particularly Bob Woolmer was a, was a big influence um, a little bit later on, just before I came up to Derbyshire. Um, he was a massive influence as a second team coach um, and player coach. Yeah. So we learned a lot off him and he was one of the, probably one of the first county coaches that really got into the technical side of coaching. And what, so what was the pathway for you then to, to get to, you've already mentioned Kent seconds, what was that, progress, how did that happen? Um, I don't really know how it happened other than that I went along to coaching, I used to go to Sunday net, Nets on a, um, at Canterbury and the coaches saw you, um, I was playing at 15, I was taking days off during the, during the summer term particularly, I hardly ever went to school in the summer <laughs> term, I think I did four days a week 
playing cricket and one yeah. day a week at school and used to go in on a Friday lunchtime to get the next four or five days off to play in the, the old Warwick Cup, I think it oh, was. Right, yeah. So the under 25s yeah. game, competitions. Uh, we had the two one day games in those days and then a three day game, sort of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so we had a lot of lot of cricket on and I was playing 100 plus days a year. Really? It was a, an awful lot of cricket. School cricket, club cricket, county cricket. Um, and never really went on into county juniors because I was already involved with the same yeah. team. And what were your, I mean, you, you were known, I guess, as an all-rounder, but also, I suppose, you batting, were, you were batting in the top six, weren't you, by and large, certainly when yeah. you came to Derbyshire. What were your, what, were you an all-rounder when you were playing at that younger age, or were you no. specialising? No, I was, I was a batter, no. and I bowled a little bit of off-spin. Um, but, you know, off spinners, as we do, we, we bowl at one bad ball, you get taken off. If you're yeah. a fast bowler, you get away <laughs> with it. Um, but as a spinner, um, yeah, you, if you didn't quite get it in the right spot, that was it. And then you might not get asked to bowl again the next game, and then coming back was even harder than mm. in game three, four, five, whenever. So, um, you know, you didn't bowl regularly. So I was an out and out batter. I was top three, uh, normally batting around about three, sometimes opening in the second team um, down there. So, yeah, playing a lot of. Um, twos cricket, batting top order, but not really bowling. Right. And the bowling came along actually when I came up to Derbyshire. Right. So you, you made your debut for Kent's first eleven in 87, I think? Yeah, something like so that. So were you a contracted player by that point? Or yes. yes. Yeah, I was contracted straight out of school at 18. Right. Um, wasn't going off to university. Um, so there was nothing like that. I literally came straight into the county side and I'd been on a... Um, paid by day sort of basis right the way from sort yeah. of 15, 15 or 16. Um, went on the staff, um, did okay, um, and progressed up to sort of playing a few of the first team games, but I only played a handful down at Kent. It was yeah. quite a tough side to get into. Yeah, I was going to say, who was the captain and what sort of, what, what other players were in the side at that time? Well, it was, uh, it was Chris Tabaret was initially captain, and then when, I, towards the end of my uh, five or four years there, uh, Chris Cowdery was captain, and um, you know they they had a, a good side, and there was just, there was just that start of uh, Trevor Ward, myself, Graham Cowdery coming into the side, um, Alan Eagleston, people yeah. like that. So they were starting to bring in some of the younger players, but we were getting a, a, a couple of games, and that was about it. I mean, our, my debut was a Sunday league game um, at Hove against Imran Khan, <laughs> and um, and I went out to open the batting in that with a floppy hat on. <laughs> which was not a very clever idea at the time, but um, Derek Underwood was playing still right. then, and he said, just let him go. Um, and everybody else wouldn't let him out. him around then? Because in those days, I mean, Sunday League crowds were, the grounds were full, weren't yes, they? Yes, yeah. Did he come down the hill? He came down the hill. Um, he <laughs> didn't open the bowling. They wouldn't let him. Um, he had steam coming out of his ears because they wouldn't let him open the bowling. Right. And uh, he came on first change, and the first two or three balls I played back quite comfortably. And uh, it was a short boundary, as they normally have at Sussex, towards the pavilion. Yeah. And I thought, well, if he bowls that length again, it, it'll go. And uh, I think it hit my bat on the bat swing. It was a little <laughs> bit quicker. And then the next one, I gloved off the side of my head. Uh, with a bumper, and I, I didn't even see it. Um, and luckily, I got a glove in front of it, otherwise it would have sconned me. <laughs> there were some sharp, quick, fast bowls around, weren't there, at that time? It was a yeah. very... For a young player coming into the game, I would imagine the step up must have seemed quite significant when you look at, I mean, Imran, one of the greats of yeah. the game, but every county had them, didn't they? I caught a few of them at the ends of their careers. Um, you know, Malcolm Marshall, people like that, was here. Um, I remember playing him, and he, he was still brisk, still got it through. Um, but I didn't have any problem with that at that stage. But they were all coming towards the end, and you know, obviously, then playing with Michael Holding here and mm. people like that was um, you know, just an eye opener. Um, at Kent, we never got to practice particularly with the first team. So as second teamers, uh, we would come in and bowl at the first team in yep. pre-season. Um, they would all disappear off, and then we'd bowl at each other. And so our first introduction was either a an injured player coming down. Um, which we got a few, Patrick Patterson, I remember, <laughs> steaming in at us and nobody had a clue what was going on because we'd never faced anything near the pace. Um, so we had that sort of thing and then we went in the first team and the next minute, that was it. You know, you were, you were facing somebody really, really quick. Um, Trevor Ward's debut, I, I believe, was at, if 
I remember right, was at Basingstoke on a not a great wicket, and a few of the first team had uh, gained injuries, <laughs> and Wardy got called up and ho opened against Malcolm Marshall on a very very poor wicket, and then immediately got dropped after the game. And we were playing Hampshire at Bournemouth, and he was my roommate, and he had a bruise on his on his front thigh where he'd been hit by Marshall, um, and it had gone through a glass fibre fronted um, thigh pad, and his leg was bruised black and blue from knee to hip, mm. um, just from one blow. And he I said he'd never faced it. I guess those hand grounds are, are probably played a part, didn't they, in those kind of... We, we sort of forget about that, that by and large now cricket tests were played on headquarters mm. grounds, and whereas in those days, I can remember a game in, that you played in actually at Dartford, but if you yes. remember that yeah. one, Michael and, was it Michael and Devon, I think? I think it was, yeah. And we only needed to take seven or eight wickets in one yeah. innings to win the game, in the last innings to win the game, because they'd hospitalised several yeah. players on that pitch. I caught, uh, I caught Chris Cowdery at short leg off Michael and he yeah. smashed it, yeah. and I somehow <laughs> managed to catch this thing at short leg, and I... I must admit, I gave him a little send off because that was the, I think that was the first year. That was 80, no, 80, 89. 80, 89, I think. One of the two. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and it, of course he was the one that had sort of got rid of me from Kent, yeah. um, which was quite a, a strange story. Um, so I wasn't particularly happy with him, so uh, I gave him a bit of a send off. Well, it's perhaps a convenient moment to ask about that because obviously you had that summer in, of 87, but then um, during the winter of 87, 88, you moved. Um, to Derbyshire. So, so how did that come about, Steve? Well, it was it was a strange one. Um, it happened twice, um, Kent and here. Uh, I got basically released from contract, but I heard it on the radio. So uh, right. I was I was actually playing against Leicester for Kent and drove up to a um, coaching uh, certificate, do my coaching yeah. awards, and uh, went up to do that at Lillishall, I think it was, and on the way back. Um, I got home and the phone rang and it was my sister and she just heard I got released and Chris Cowdery had actually told me that I was okay. So four days later I was binned as it were and uh, not particularly happy obviously but I went up to the county ground and walked in and I was met by Brian Luckhurst and the, um, the chief executive or secretary at the time whatever and they both looked at me and went nobody's told him have they. So I heard my sister heard on the on yeah. the radio that one. It was announced before I found out, um, and then strangely it happened here as well. Yeah. So I was sat in the Clavelli when I found out that I'd been released here. You know, it's just miscommunication. Yeah, but, I think uh, I think to, with no, I'm not defending for one moment because I know of other players in Derbyshire's history who've mm -hmm. had the same thing happen to, and I think part of it was because of the old anarchic way of committees being told first yes. what the release. They used to have what they called the. Was it called the release list or the retained list? Retained list, yes. Yeah, and it yeah. went to a committee of, that was nearly always men, 15 or 20 people sitting in a room, <laughs> who were told, don't say anything for a week yeah. until we've told the player. Yeah. And it was just an impossibility for people to yeah. keep the mouth shut. And then, and then not realising that somebody hadn't been told, yeah. it went out onto the radio, to the exactly. local radios. And exactly. of course, that's how I heard on both occasions. It was, yeah. and local radio dropped it, and not realising that we didn't know, it wasn't their fault. It was a miscommunication on the... On the the county's point at part, but um, so how did the Derbyshire gig come about? Then? Well, it's who, who was in touch? Phil with you? Russell was was the man. Yeah. Um, Phil had come down and had a quiet chat with me during the summer, right. um, and suggested that you know they might be interested if I was interested, and uh, nothing had happened. This was sort of early August, um, and. I suppose that might have been looked upon as a, an illegal approach in those days, but uh, it was a quiet chat over over a quiet drink. Um, and then within three days, two, three days, uh, he rang up, came down, we sat down, chatted it through, and within 20 minutes was signed up. It was that simple. What was, what was Phil's skill? Because we talk to people all the time about Phil as a coach, but of course... As history shows that actually he was a spotter of players. Yes. And what he managed to do was bring people like Mortensen and Malcolm and yourself and Bowler uh, and others, Jack mm. Warner, to the club who, who perhaps had not been able to fulfil their careers elsewhere. Yeah. So, what was his great strength? Did, was it just simply he could look at a player and see they got something? I think I think that's exactly it. Um, you know, yes, there's figures. You can look at figures all, all you like, and to a certain degree, there's certainly there's some players that stand out. Obviously. Mm. Um, 
the guys he bought here probably weren't those sorts of players. They weren't, you know, averaging 45 no, 50, no, not at all. Um, or taking taking wickets at 15 apiece. Um, and Derbyshire wasn't a rich county. It wasn't yeah. one of the big big guns. Um, so it was a case of finding players that fitted. And what he did really, really well at that period, um, we had a magnificent side of youngish players. And as you say, Peter Bowler. Um, all right, we had Chris as a local lad coming yeah. through, Tim O'Gorman, people like this. But he brought in guys um, from outside that um, just fitted. Mm. And between him and po probably Kim Barney, I would imagine would be instrumental in that as well. They put together a side that was very, very competitive. Um, probably after an era of you know, not that much competitiveness mm. and certainly not winning anything. You know, it was 81, wasn't it, when yep. the NatWest? And um, prior to that, 1934, I think, if, it was, if I remember it, 36. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they hadn't won a great deal, but yeah. were not maybe as competitive. And then all of a sudden, there was a side there that competed with everybody. Yeah. You know, and we were up in the championship and competing in the top six, which was pretty fair in those days when you're talking yeah. of 18, 17, 18 sides in it. Um, we were up in the one day, game, one day games, um, you know, getting to Lords. Not quite winning the first one, but uh, getting back there and doing 93, the Sunday League, um, and we were always in the frame. So. so what was that dressing room like then to walk into? Presumably you came and did pre-season. Yeah, yeah. And then you walk, you walk into a dressing room that's got some big characters. Morrison, oh, yeah. Michael Holding, yeah. John Morris. John Morris. Kim yeah. was captain. Yeah, John um, Wright. Wright, My of first course, year. was his last year's yeah. overseas. There's a young... Dominic Cork, presumably, uh, on the fringes. Dom no, Dominic was he, a little bit later. Yes, he was YTS, yeah. But yeah, that's right. He was running yeah. around doing the bank run, yeah. I think, if Probably I remember. Probably noisy Cricken as well, knocking around. Yeah, Crick was there. Bernie Mayer yes. um, was first team keeper. Crick yeah. was a little bit later. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was quite a dressing room. And to walk in first time, the first person I met was Paul Newman. Yeah. Um, out you, in the you, car park. One of your, you've had a long career... Yes. Yeah. Him, so. Well, I mean, he left obviously and went to Durham, mm. um, but he's ended up in Nor in Norfolk with uh, where we are and playing for Norfolk. So yeah, we're, and we're coaching over there. Uh, he coaches privately as well as in a private uh, a private school, mm. little prep school. I do the same sort of thing. Been doing that for donkeys years. So yeah, you know, Judge was the first person I met in in the middle of the car park, and uh, I think it was April the first as well. Yeah. And uh, I bumped into him in his old beaten up. Um, Austin Maestro that had more rust on it than, than green paint and uh, and I just turned up as a young upstart coming up uh, in a brand new sponsored car and I think I put, put his nose out of joint from first ball um, but we got on great we, we got on really well and um, as I say still to this day we're still uh, together playing well not playing cricket now so much although he is um, but yeah he's still coaching over there and we're still coaching together in county county junior Squads. Excellent. Well, that's a lovely first interview, and we've we've reached a, an appropriate point, I think, where we'll stop and then we'll pick it up with that first season at Derbyshire in 1988. For now, Steve, thanks very much.